Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Slick Works. As you can see, we are back on the Monte Carlo today. So I'll show you what I've done. I did this last night. So because this stripe is still going to be silver, I wanted to break up these lines. As you can see how I did, uh, I added a little bit of black shading on the purple that goes underneath too. Just pretty much just laid a piece of tape there and five passes. I did nine passes over the uh, thick stuff because I really want to give it some serious depth. So yeah, every place that the, the pagan gold stripes pass underneath this um, will be shaded, it is shaded now so that it actually looks like it's, you know, got that 3D to it. And I know it looks like I kind of went overboard with the black. Um, maybe I did, I don't think I did. Uh, once I pull this off and you can see how bright, like, like right there, how bright that silver line is, like it's going to be that bright right there. So it'll, hopefully it'll look like it really just waves and dips down underneath there. So I've pulled out the filler panel that goes between the back glass and the deck lid and this needs finishing. Obviously when I was painting it I did not carry the whole pattern down the whole thing um, just because this was much faster and I'm not getting paid to do this paint job. I'm actually paying quite a bit of money. So I'm gonna where the stripes of the body color come I'm gonna curl that off and curl that off and see if I can come up with a cool design maybe add a little spike in the middle or something like that. Uh, we'll see. So this will be my break for the uh, body color with the patterns. Put just a nice little peak in the middle there, so I think that'll finish it off nicely. Also, yes, that is the middle. I don't know why they put the bolt holes. It, it doesn't make sense, yeah. But yeah, so that's it there. Uh, time to go into the booth, give one last clean, and then start mixing up some paint. Fans are on, heat's on, windows are open, parts are clean. So all that's left to do is get in my paint suit and mix up some paint. Okay, here we go. Now it's time to clear this stuff. So I've got some clear mixed up, uh, hoping that'll be enough for the whole job. The gun, I didn't do do the full wham bam sham lam, take it apart and clean off every piece. I just ma uh, cranked it up to max pressure and then just hosed some uh, gun wash through it until it was all showing clean and clear and under control. So yeah, about five, 10 minutes more and then this stuff will get its first coat of clear after I unmask uh, the candy on, on that filler panel. Okay, so there it is. The first bikini blue laid down on a part of the car. Um, mistakes. Yes, there are some. And I'll show you. So as I unmasked it, it pulled out a few tiny little bits of flake and it took the, uh, the candy with it. So that's okay. Um, I'm going to live with that. And uh, can I? Am I going to be able to sleep tonight? Can I live with that? That one? Okay, I'm going to dab something on that one. But just that one. Okay? Just that one. And maybe that one too. All right, fine, I'm just gonna fix it. This is the most important piece. This piece got like five coats of clear, something like that. So you can see it is just pounded on.
You can hear my feet sticking to the floor. Like anytime you hear someone walking on a drag strip, same sort of deal. That clear coat is just sticky. But it is now 1.15 in the morning. All right, well, last time I was in the shop, I'll show what I did. Lights, cameras, got the car all masked up. <clears throat> so tonight, or this morning, it's like just after three in the morning. I woke up at like one, been up for a couple hours already. Couldn't go back to sleep, so I decided to just come down here and clear coat the car. So I gotta give the car a full clean, and the whole thing's gonna get a coat of clear. I was gonna, mask off the candy and paint in the bikini blue and then do it. But I figured it'd be probably a smart move just to clear over anything. That way I have like a layer, a layer of protection. If I get any, if any sort of overspray, any spillage, like, you know, anything could happen. I'll have that, that layer that I can sand down and get rid of any mistakes. So this is where we're at now. Uh, I am gonna mix up some bikini blue and get this painted in. And yeah, hopefully I'll get this car fully cleared, uh, cleaned and cleared before the sun comes up. And then I'll be able to go inside and make my kids some breakfast and uh, start a uh, normal piece. Okay, well now I'm at definitely the most nerve wracking part of this whole custom paint job. So we are at the point where we are now sanding the clear coat flat so there's no shininess like that. Um, yeah, this is the part where you have to know exactly how deep to go and when to stop. Otherwise you'll burn through the clear and then I'll start chewing into my candy patterns which would be horrible. I had one minor little burn through right there which is nice and easy because it's just black so that'll be a quick little blow in just got a piece of tape there to remind oh oh now it's not sticking okay time for a new piece of tape so i'm about halfway done not even okay i'm about a third of the way done 
the whole side of the body because it's going to be one solid color color that was blocked with 320 going to go over it hand sand with 400 and then 600 and then into the booth so now i'm just going to keep working on flattening out these patterns and hopefully i don't get any more burn throughs So it's been a while, got my trunk done. It's full of subwoofers and bass and awesomeness. So now the whole car is sanded out in 600, as I've told you. But now what I need to do is mask off all the patterns. So I've just blown off, blown, blown off the back part of the car. So I just got to tape off the patterns where the body color will be showing in that little section there. So it's that little swoop. And then of course the back of the trunk and where it dives up in the middle here. Uh, so I'm gonna use some eighth inch tape. Uh, yeah, yeah, eighth inch, maybe even thinner. We'll see. And start taping it off. I think it's a beautiful day to paint a car today. Okay, so the car's all masked up, patterns are all covered, um, but the car, as you can see, we got some light sections, some dark sections, as well as the obvious that I need to cover, uh, which is all the metal flakes that's been sanded out. So I'm gonna hit this car with a coat of sealer first, uh, just one coat, and that'll bring it all one color. I've actually never used sealer before, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I have a primer sealer, it's like four to one, but uh, if you mix it four to one to one with reducer, then apparently it's a sealer. So that's what I'm gonna use, cover the whole car, and then base coat, unmask it, fix all the candy mistakes, because I already know there is some. There is gonna be some candy that peels off with the tape. I've already found a spot over there. So we'll, we'll see how that goes when it comes to unmasking the patterns. <laughs> That's the base coat down. I don't see very much modeling. I see a little bit in here. Um, hoping that's just the way that it laid down and it's a texture thing, not a uh, uh, metallics thing. So we won't know until it's cleared. But I've started unmasking the patterns. Uh, what do you think? I'm happy with it. Totally works with the color. Um, yeah, it's all coming together now, folks. So now once it's all unmasked, can attack rag the whole car down and then give it some clear. Okay, so she is ready for clear, but I do have some touch-ups I have to do, like which I mentioned earlier. Couple there, bad one there. That one sticks out like a sore thumb. It's unfortunate it's right in a fade too, so that's gonna be pretty difficult to fix. Um, got a little black chewed off of there, but that can just be brush touched. I'll just brush touch uh, those also. Another one over here, over there. That's gotta be blown in with the airbrush. So, a little bit of fixes to do, uh, but by the end of tonight, the car will be locked in with clear coat. <laughs> The 
And the car is ready for clear. Just gotta tack rag the whole thing and then give it two, three, maybe four, probably three coats of clear. Uh, just enough to sand down any areas where, uh, where you can still see the, the waves from the patterns. But I'm not gonna hyperlapse that like I did last time because last time my phone's charging cord, the little hole that you plug the charger in, it hasn't worked the same since and it's only gonna get worse from here. So I'll show you guys what the car looks like clear coated in two seconds. Well folks, here she is clear coated and looking pretty good, pretty good. So here she is, she is shiny, but she is also oh, tripping on hoses here. She's also covered in orange peel. Uh, roof looks good. Yeah, really pounded it on on the roof. So that looks great. It's gonna take a bit of work to get it right. So it'll take a bunch of wet sanding, a bunch of polish. There's there's a ton of trash in the in the clear coat and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, off to a good start. I'm gonna unmask just the bottom of this car and drive it out into the sunshine because I just gotta see what this color looks like outside. I just gotta see it. So, Jeannie is fully painted now, but her paint is full of dust and debris. It's, uh, it has a few runs and a few sags. Uh, the main issue is the dust. The sags are right underneath the, the wing mirrors here. Yeah, I got lazy, I painted the mirrors on the car. I'm out of time, this thing's gotta get done because I wanna cruise it this year. And, uh, and obviously, it's my rolling billboard for my custom paint business, Slickworks Custom Paint. So tonight, kind of a late start to the night. It's like 10.30 at night right now, but I'm getting going on this thing because I am fully inspired. So where we're gonna start, we're gonna start right up here and then right there and the hood as well. Why? Because I'm gonna be leaning all over the doors and the fenders and stuff like that as I'm working on these flat areas. Also, they're flat, perfectly flat, perfectly smooth. Very, very little. You see, you know, a few bits of dust here and there, but but very little, uh, there we go, yeah. Very little trash in the roof and uh, the hood in the trunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding on this stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna start with 800 grit. Then I'm gonna switch to 1,000 or uh, 1,200, 1,000, yeah, something like that. And then 1,500 dry, 1,500 wet. Finally finishing off in 3000 grit Trizac, and then I'm gonna do a stage one, two, three polish on it, two coats of wax, and uh, and it'll be done. Yeah, I've had it in the booth now, so it's had a chance to cure up for three days, and the clear is, is now rock solid. So, let's get going. Just wanted to take a real quick pause to show you guys this. So all the patterns have already been sanded out, but you see this shininess? That's what we're trying to get rid of. So pretty much all the 800 grit's doing is just sanding it flat, making the surface perfectly flat. So you can see where we've added this uh, stripe of the, the new color here. Um, it's a lot taller, so all the clear's gotta be sanded flat. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed it won't burn through. I don't think it will though, 800 grit. Pretty mild, so yeah.
Okay, well I've been wet sanding and polishing this car for a while. Basically what I'm doing is, if you see here, let me just focus, there we go. Yeah, so you see all that nasty orange peel and grossness? The goal is to sand all that out so it looks like this. Now you see the difference there? Look at that. Now that is mint. That is not so nice. That is absolutely mint. So what I did is I sanded out the fender here. So I got the whole fender sanded out. This is actually block sanded. You gotta block the whole thing. So this is blocked flat with 800. And when you know it's flat, you can't see any more of this uh, nasty looking orange peel and bumps and stuff. Like you'll still, like you see that, that fat line there where the clear kind of rested there, you'll still be able to see that line, but you know, that's, that's okay. It's, I'm not going completely ridiculous with this car. So yeah, so it's all sanded flat in 800. So now I gotta hose it down with water, sand it down with a DA, 1000 grit, 1500 grit, 3000 grit, and then number one polish, and that's how it's gonna sit for now until the whole car is a number one, and then we're gonna do two, three, wax, etc. Yeah, so here, just in that one more example here. See the top of the fender there? Yuck, right? Disgusting. So that's all I gotta get sanded down, sanded flat, until it looks like that. How's that? Yeah. So that's how you get your, your show car shine on your show car. Is it gonna be a show car? Probably not. Well, it's gonna have a really nice paint job. That's the goal. You're one seriously cool looking dude, you know that? Thumbs up. I can't wait now. Oh, yeah, I guess you're struggling with that. Uh, what do you think of Jeannie's paint? It looks good. Looks good, right? I like it. Yeah, thanks, bud. guys well just a few little mishaps that happen got this ugly burn through there so I'm gonna have to fix that eventually I also got a burn through here and I got a burn through right there but the whole car is in polish number two uh, I gave the wheels and tires a little detail um, there is overspray and, and greasy stuff on the tires so the wheels, I just used steel wool and glass cleaner. The tires themselves, I used some super clean degreaser, uh, really watered down. Sprayed it on, and then I used some gray scotch uh to, to clean off the uh, the white wall, and then just rub the whole thing down. So so once that's, uh, once the car's out of the booth, because I can't do it in the booth, because fisheye city, but then, you, then I'll be able to hose it down with some tire shine, really make it just, you know, pop right so yeah the whole car is in number two polish uh needs a number three polish i'm still not happy with the reflections on the hood it's it's catching a lot of the uh a lot of the layers of all the paint so i'm gonna pull the hood pull the deck lid the roof i can live with but uh, not this year i mean maybe in the winter um and then just give it a good flow coat because as you can see right there i mean you're seeing all the all the reflections from the different layers of candy but this year i'm going to live with it because there's probably not going to be sharp horizontal lines and i'm 
out in the field at a car show, right? Okay, well I got the car outside doing some work in the sunshine and I figured I would try to polish up some of that chrome plastic trim. So this is what I've gotten done so far. I polished that side, but not this side. Kind of hard to see if there's any difference at all, but if I take it outside, is that side versus that side. Kind of tough to tell, especially in this camera. But, ah, bugs. But the right side is definitely much more cloudy, so yeah, I just polish a little grill. So Genie's got these super rare marker lights, curb lights. I'll show you what, I'll show you how Monte Carlo's standard curb lights looked. So they look like that, right? So I actually bought this fender because I, I had a dent in uh, Genie's fender. I ended up repairing it because it would take more work to cut out this section and weld it in for, uh, for this curb light, right? So with the key click to on, um, you can turn the indicator to the right or to the left, usually to the right because you're lighting up the curb for, for your lady to step out so that she can see if uh, she's stepping in the puddle or not. So these are super rare, super rare. Uh, this one will clean up nicely, but this one was full of dirt and look at this ugly, ugly stuff on the inside of the lens. So I've taken my heat gun over here and I've just slowly heated it up and pried it and pried it and pried it. And yeah, I know it's not pretty. It's all kind of warped and gross, but you won't be able to see that. And I have now gained access to the inside so I can be able to wash this a little better. I'll just take this up to the kitchen sink and wash it as well as all the dirt that fell out of that. Yeah, so this will be nice and clean. And I mean, if this one looks just spectacular, which it will, I might even do the same thing with this. It's not bad, but you can tell that. Well, is it still sealed? Yeah, yeah, no, that's. See, there's those uh, watermarks on the inside of the lens. I would just be able to wipe it away with my thumb if, if that were on uh, on the outside, but it's not. So I might end up doing the same with this one. Maybe we'll see. So I'll get this cleaned up, and I'll show you guys how I'm going to glue it all back together. So these are lamps for the license plate and I got blue and I got green, but I don't know how they'll look. The paint is kind of bluey green. Um, so I'm gonna try one and try the other and see what I like more. I've decided I'm going with the green. Why? Yeah, it it's not really, doesn't really fully work with the paint job, but it still looks kind of legal. So, and uh, yeah, the blue, I just feel like that blue, it's just on every Volkswagen Jetta and the Honda Civic and whatnot. So yeah, we're going with the green. It's gonna be different. It's cool. I dig it. Woo! You're doing great, buddy. Wheel's coming up. Uh, not too much I can do for now. Well, I'm gonna show you guys what I've done for all the stainless trim that goes around the windshield and the uh, back glass. So using just a drill and a polishing pad, everyone's got a drill laying around, right? So most reveal moldings, uh, they're, I mean, the older cars are stainless. They last forever. Uh, with the 80s cars, they're like anodized aluminum. So they start to get all cloudy and foggy and ugly looking like this. Let me just bring it up against here to get the focus a little better. Yeah, so they get ugly and cloudy like that. But using a little bit of polish on a buffer on a drill, you can get it to look like that. So there's your before, there's your after. And if you didn't burn through the anodizing, which happens a lot, but uh, in, that, in which case, clear coating it would be the best case. Uh, I'm just gonna give these a, a good buff with some wax, uh, just in case. But yeah, they polish up real nice and look pretty close to new. So these are just about ready to go on the car. Well, there we have it. Genie is all put back together, fully trimmed up, polished all the uh, stainless that run, well, 
stainless. That runs down the side, around the back. Missing a few pieces of trim because they were just not quite good enough to put on the car, so I gotta sort out something else, like in the back end here. As well as probably replace those, but they're super hard to find. But yeah, she's all trimmed up and ready to roll. Gave these a polish. All the reveal moldings are polished up and look beautiful. So yeah, Genie is pretty well done on the outside. Even put the antenna back on. So she's done on the outside and she looks great. Front end looks beautiful. Yeah. But she needs an interior because she is still all pulled apart. So I just vacuumed out the back end here. So I gotta put the back seats back in. The rear shelf there is really ugly. So I have a Mexican blanket. I'll probably just shove it in there. Maybe wedge it down in the back. Uh, that'll, look, that'll look good for, for this season until I figure out what I'm gonna do with that. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's unfinished, obviously, like this beautiful headliner. But I'm at the point now where the weather is gorgeous out. As I'm cruising around, I see all sorts of hot rods and low riders and classic cars and stuff. Like, I gotta get this thing on the road. It has a few burn throughs, it's got some issues, but it has to get on the road. Like, I'm tired of just working on it and looking at it. So, time to put the interior back in it. Yeah. pretty darn rad managed to line it up mostly with the pattern coming off the trunk which is kind of nice looks pretty sick but there's just one thing I got to test before I put the back seat in Okay, interior is going together. You guys want to see something funny? Not funny? So, I may have showed you these, probably have, but I ordered these and then cut that out of my Slickworks custom paint sticker. And yeah, because that's what they used to look like, right? So I had one out of the box and uh, one still in the box. And the box sat right about here. And as the box sat there, empty boxes got piled up all around the outside until one day, I thought that there was too many empty boxes, so time to do something about my burn pile. <laughs> now, I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. Anyways, couldn't find the other one anywhere, so I take a walk out to my burn pile, doo -doo -doo, and what do I find in the burn pile? That. Yeah. So, that's expensive, but luckily I have lots of these kicking around, so. I got one, I got two there. These are out of the, the 83 Monte Carlo Genie. This one's out of an 80 Monte Carlo. So I'm gonna polish this one up, see how good I can get it, and see if it's presentable until the new one comes in the mail.
Look at those. Woo! Pretty sure in cinnamon I had the exact same formats with the Monte Carlo embroidered into them, only in red, because my whole interior was white and red. Those look sick. Yes. Yes. And Gina's old floor mats donate to the old T-top. Yeah, we're gonna see if we can get this thing going. Though I do need a hand convincing my wife to uh, let me turn this into a daily driver, but we're not gonna go there in this episode. We just, we just, we'll just, we'll ignore that for now. Okay, so Jeannie's done. It's just, there's one thing, one thing missing that I have to do. And I absolutely hate pulling parts off this old gal. I really didn't want to. Whoa, spiderweb. I don't want that in the face. But that steering wheel just screams low rider, does it not? So, sorry Cheryl, I gotta pull your wheel off ya. I'm gonna keep the Chevette horn button and everything. Why is it not focusing? Oh, it's just all the steam that's coming out of this. Mmm. <laughs> But first, I need to figure out how to wire up the horn. So probably drill a hole in the dash and put a little push button in there. Or not the horn, the siren rather. So I gotta crawl under here. I know that the wire that comes out of the steering wheel is black. So I'm gonna try to find a black wire under here somewhere. And then I'm gonna put a little alligator clip on find the ground and then See if I could stab a hole in a black wire that I find and see if I can make the horn go because then I know that's the wire to cut and complete the circuit. Bada bing, bada boom. Fine, hang on. Let's get some light going here. There we go. Okay, but I did find way up here this black wire. This black wire right there. Show you. So I gotta get to that one. That's the one we found it. Wow, that makes it easier. <laughs> Better make darn toot and sure. That's the one. I gotta build some wires. Snip. Okay, so I'm done down here. Super simple. So I just got this. I actually changed up my mind with the, with the ground. I just went off of uh, the column itself because it's just easier. So now this comes from the, uh, the block that goes to the column. So yeah, there's my two wires for my push button switch. So I could put this back together because uh, I could pretty well drill a hole anywhere in this area. So yeah, drill a hole, figure out where I want it, somewhere over here maybe, and then just run those wires through and that's it. Okay, so now I have the horn off. Um, but now I have to go back to my first ever YouTube video about this car because I distinctly remember the wheel not being true. I think it was something like this driving down the road. So when I put on the new chain steering wheel after I clean it up, I want to make sure that it's facing straight down the road. Come on, babe. Oh, that's it. Here's a tip for you guys. If you're ever pulling a steering wheel off a car, don't take the steering wheel nut completely off to avoid smacking yourself in the face. <laughs> Whew, there it goes. Yeah, that'll do. All right. Okay, let's go get Cheryl's wheel. That, that, holy, it's hot in here. OK, 
Okay. Man, I haven't sat in this car in so long. <sighs> smells like mouse pee and cigarettes. Just laughing to myself. I remember how I did this behind this little Chevette emblem. It's just a little C-clip that's holding the horn in place. Oh, also this, this bit here um, to clean it up. That's actually a piece of a intake accordion off of a Ford Explorer. That was a write-off at the body shop that I was working at. Totally did the job and it was free. So can't beat that, right? It pains me to pull this off of Cheryl. I mean, we had Cheryl in our wedding. Like, lifelong car. That car's probably never going to be sold. I'd love if one of the kids actually wound up driving it one day. But you know what? Material things in life, especially something like this that you can feel and enjoy. It's like a visceral thing. Like, meant to be enjoyed, you know? Not meant to sit and rot in a car out there. So ordinarily when I'm cleaning rust off of something like this, off of chromed steel, I would use window cleaner or a sort of degreaser. But with this one, because there's so many hard to reach spots and like once you're outside, that is going to be bright red and bright orange and bright brown, rusty grossness. And if you use degreaser, that will mostly go black. So it'll be a lot less noticeable. So that's the plan of this thing. <laughs> 